Make large crypto trades with Kraken OTC. Execute orders of more than 100,000 off the open exchange through our premium OTC trading service. Get 24-7 access to deep liquidity, minimal slippage, and competitive execution and settlement services. Private and secure trading options include chatting securely with our trade desk for a personalized high-touch service, or use our self-service RFQ for super fast, automated OTC trading. Non-investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss and is offered to U.S. customers through Payword Interactive, Inc. For more information, go to realvision.com backslash Kraken OTC. Hey, everyone. Look, sorry, this is the cheesy interruption that you get on YouTube channels, but they're really important. I'd really appreciate it if you just hit the subscribe button. You see, it makes a difference to know how I'm doing, seeing the growth in subscribers if we're getting the right content. Obviously, comments help as well. But the, hitting the subscribe button allows me also to book the best guests. It really does make a difference. So if you do enjoy this content, and I know you do because you keep coming back to watch it, just please hit the subscribe button. Sorry again for the cheese, but it is important. I appreciate it so much. Take care. Join me, Raoul Pal, as I go on a journey of discovery through the macro, crypto, and exponential age landscapes. In The Journey Man, I talk to the smartest people in the world so we can all become smarter together. Hi, everyone. I'm Raul Pal, and welcome to my show, The Journeyman. Journeyman, as you know by now, is my exploration at the nexus of macro, crypto, and the exponential age of technology. And I want to do an update for you that brings all of these together in the most importantly profound way. It's something I've talked about in some of my work, some of my podcasts, but I've never really put it in one place. And I think it is the most important thing I've ever really talked about. You see, my journey, as you know, had been from democratizing financial intelligence and helping people in their financial journey. Once trust broke down with the institutions and the system itself after 2008 and 2012 in Europe, that was the birth of Real Vision. The idea was to educate people in that. As I moved forwards, I started realizing the profound effects um, of the retirement crisis, this baby boom generation, the fact that assets had driven further and further out of most people's reach, and that there was a young cohort and an old cohort that was really going to face a lot of problems. I talked for the young cohort about how cryptocurrency, this was back in 2016, was going to be one of the answers to get them out of this trap. And the baby boomers had more complexities around how they were going to evolve and survive around this situation. We, you know, I've talked a lot about the rise of of digital assets, and then I brought in obviously the everything code thesis of how debasement is driving a lot of this, and this is our enemy: an eight percent debasement a year, plus let's say a three percent inflation rate. We've got an eleven percent hurdle rate on our investments, which the S and P five hundred doesn't even do. So we have to be very careful in how we protect our wealth or greater create wealth. This is part of this um, how to unfuck your future idea. That's based on all of these premises. But there's something much bigger that wraps the whole lot together, and that's the theory of the exponential age. Again, when I came out with the exponential age in 2020, people thought I was nuts. I'm like, this is going to be the fastest growth of technology in all human history. It's going to be the largest change we will ever go through as a species in the shortest period of time. And people thought I was being dramatic. Then AI came and everyone's like, holy shit. And now the robots are coming and everyone's like, holy shit, squared. Um, and now everyone's trying to figure out <clears throat> what this means for society, how this all works, how to regulate it, what to do. But it's moving at lightning speed. By the time this video comes out, I don't know, maybe chat GPT. Um, I think the strawberry model, the large model comes out. Uh, that's coming out very soon. Again, that'll be another step change. We know there's more releases coming from Google, but really we're already hearing that OpenAI probably trained ChatGPT5 or ChatGPT Next, as it's called, which is a quantum leap yet again, as big as the leap from ChatGPT1 to ChatGPT4. When we're getting closer to something like artificial intelligence. And so this video is really about why you've got six years left to make as much money as possible before everything we kind of understand about economics, markets, business falls apart. And I can't see beyond that. So I call it the economic singularity. 
So I think we've got about six years for that. It's not a doom date. Well, this date, it all happens. But it's beyond about 2030 when things are going to become not understandable by using the existing frameworks of uh, economics, financial analysis, markets, and that kind of stuff. So what the fuck am I talking about here? I'm talking about the magic formula. The magic formula for GDP growth is driven... So sorry, I'm just going to go back. Is Most people look at AI, the rise of AI, and think of it, again, in societal terms. You know, what does it mean for humans, for jobs, and all of that? But I think there are more profound implications that come faster that we need to be aware of, and that's the economic singularity. So GDP growth in the magic formula is driven by population growth, productivity growth, and debt growth. So population growth. In all of the developed world, including uh, China, we've got falling aging demographics. Many populations are now shrinking. The US, due to immigration, is just holding its head above water, but the rate of change um, of population is collapsing everywhere. So that means that the economic driver of population growth has disappeared. Now, we've seen that in GDP because GDP, trend rate of GDP has been falling and falling and falling. And it's gone from in the US from like 4% to 1.75%. And across the rest of the developed world, it's fallen even further, in most cases below 1%, matching population growth collapsing in those regions. The other side of the equation is productivity growth. Productivity growth is basically units of output per kilojoule of energy, or in other words, what you get out of your cost of electricity. So if electricity is the kind of the energy that makes the world go round, the economic energy, then we need to see what we get out of that energy. So technology has been the big driver of productivity, but the problem is as populations get older, they become less productive. So it's really been a battle, and technology has not won that battle uh, for quite some time. Then we've had debt growth, and I've talked extensively about debt growth. Debt growth basically stops in 2008, and all debt growth is now is servicing of old debts. So that economic engine's disappeared. If you think about the Chinese economic miracle, that was a massive population of, at the time, I think it was 1.1 billion people uh, back in the mid-90s, and what they did was come into the global labor force, the economy of China opened up. That's a massive GDP push. Productivity, well, they built the roads, the railways, the power plants, and all of the stuff that makes China what it is today. That was a productivity boost. And then they increased debt as well. So we had a huge economic boom in China, which we're now paying back with aging population because of the one-child policy. And we've also got a huge problem uh, on the debt side. So how the hell do we solve this? You see, the everything code will just keep repeating ad infinitum where we just have to keep debasing currency to try and offset the debt payments because um, GDP growth is not fast enough. So GDP is the is kind of the economic cash flow that pays for the debts. If GDP growth is low, interest rates need to be low, which is why the Fed are going to cut and all of those kind of things. But also, as GDP growth goes lower... Debt growth keeps ballooning and you have to keep refinancing all of this debt because there's not enough uh, uh, growth to grow your way out of the debt-based economy. But things started changing at the margin and it really accelerated over COVID. Firstly, Amazon, I think, now employs more robots than it does humans. And this is a trend I've been pointing out for some time. Humans are cheaper replaced by robots that are more productive. They don't complain, they don't have unions, um, and over time, they're much, much cheaper. So the rise of the robots is just starting. We're seeing um, Tesla with its Optimus robot. We're seeing Figure. Uh, we're seeing Boston Dynamics. We're seeing a whole bunch of robotics companies. So humanoid robots really start to replace humans because they have dexterity. So they don't have to be for single tasks, much like machine learning was for single tasks and AI is much broader. Um, we're going to see multitasking robots. So that starts helping bolster the lack of humans in the population. But the robots will take uh, longer to scale. Physical hardware, you have to manufacture it, or you have to design it. We're still at early stage of this. So yes, we will see Tesla robots and, and others coming into, let's say, factories. But in our houses, it's probably 10, 15 years away. Um, but it's coming. Now, the, the big 
lever here is AI. AI is basically infinite human knowledge. Now, why the magic formula works is because we've charged for and created an economic system around scarcity, scarcity of labor and scarcity of knowledge. So as the, the labor um, scarcity got solved by the machine age and even the industrial revolution, we've seen a transition to service-based economies for humans. So that's where we have adapted and moved into places that don't require our manual labor as much. Sure, there's plenty of manual labor, but it's been moving over time. Now, the issue is, is knowledge, whether it's simply a person working in a retail store or whether it's a lawyer, surgeon, doctor, accountant, creative des designer, m brand marketing, anything, will soon get replaced by AI. And mainly the models are good enough now to do a lot of that. But over the next five or six years, these models are going to accelerate. Now, what's interesting is right now, we kind of assume that these models have an IQ of around 100. So they're sort of average human intelligence. But I think that's a bad way of looking at it because it has an IQ of 100 in every topic known to humanity. So it's a polymath with an IQ of 100 in everything. Now, as these models scale and the breakthroughs come through, and they will come through in the next 12 months, 24 months, we will see the average IQ of AI go from 100 to 400, and then onto a 1,000, and then some people can say onto a million as this can compute. So a million times the intelligence of a human is a system that we don't understand. And I don't want to go into the singularity about what that all means. It's the economic singularity that I think is the most important to all of us and our financial futures. And that's what I'm here to talk to you about. You see, what we're doing is we're using the everything code to just keep paying the debts to stall the system until this kicks in. There are two economic centers of gravity where this is really being worked on hard. Firstly, the US and China is hyper-focused on the AI. He who controls the AGI controls the world. Now, I think we'll have multiple AGIs and whether they intersect and combine, we don't know that future. And I'm not concerned about that now. That's a topic for another day. Really, what I'm thinking about is the massive knowledge that comes from that. It's infinite humans, right? Infinite humans. So knowledge has zero scarcity. So therefore, it's zero in value. Everything that gets digitized goes to zero in value, which is one of the reasons why blockchain is so important, because you can create digital scarcity. But knowledge is going to go to zero in value. It's going to be like water everywhere. What the fuck does that mean? Well, I'll come on to a bit on that in a sec. And when you scale robots as well, you know, again, this is more infinite humans. On the other side of the equation is productivity. So we talked about productivity being based around um, output per unit of electricity, let's call it. Now, people look at what Europe's doing and their drive towards green energy and say, what a what a ridiculous waste of resources. They're pumping money into this. It's all going to be burned. What a waste of time. It's not. In fact, it's probably one of the most important things. And both China and Europe are leading this charge. And in fact, Europe, uh, China's leading it overall. You see, using renewable energy creates two outcomes. Firstly, it massively lowers the cost of electricity. So um, renewable energy shows an exponentiality in, in the cost. So cost keeps collapsing um, each year. So it's down sort of 99% over the last 20 years, and it'll keep driving lower and lower and lower as we get more effective in harnessing the sun's energy. The sun's energy, you know, this is a massive nuclear reactor in the sky that's basically free to use, and it'll get cheaper and cheaper to capture for all of us. Now, right now, people say, well, yeah, but it doesn't scale right now being the words. Scaling means battery technology. Scaling means decentralized grids, not centralized grids. You don't need centralized grids to run cities. You, you can use decentralized grids, in which case um, um, solar, uh, geothermal, and others scale massively because you just need smaller amounts in more places than a big amount in one place, which is where most people get this wrong. 
And the reason why we're doing that is because it's much more efficient to try and eventually get it from this massive nuclear reactor in the sky than it is from from um, burning old trees and uh, fossils from the past. It's actually a less efficient way of doing it, even though it's very energy dense. Energy density is less important if you've got uh, abundant energy in terms of renewables. Obviously, nuclear is the other massive play here. Nuclear, once it ramps up, basically brings the cost of electricity to zero. So I think the marginal cost of electricity goes to zero. I think Europeans and Chinese are driving it there and they're driving it on purpose because there's no way out of this economic trap until we drive down the cost of electricity to negligible costs and therefore it becomes a multiplier as the technology scales on the other side, i.e. we become more efficient at using that electricity cost. That's a huge multiplier. So we've got two massive multipliers coming. One is infinite humans. Two is the productivity miracle of cheap energy. Those two things completely change what economies look like. So if you think about that formula, suddenly if you go, if you double the amount of intelligence in the planet in one year, you can potentially, I don't know, move GDP by 30% in a year if that intelligence is used. And when you drive down the cost of electricity and productivity rises, suddenly you start to get bizarre outcomes. Bizarre outcomes because it doesn't necessarily accrue to the individual either. It accrues in this kind of AI world and robotics world, whether it's to superpowers, super powerful companies, whether it's to governments, whether it's to autonomous agents, which are coming to in a sec, or a whole bunch of other ways, it doesn't necessarily accrue to us. And that's my fear here, is the accrual of, of the massive gains of a complete quantum change in the study of economics and how economies work doesn't necessarily accrue to us humans. So I'm thinking about once you get free electricity from nuclear at scale and all these other things, and infinite intelligence, right? You've created basically new species. And again, that's the story for down the road. What I'm more interested about now is, okay, AI agents are coming into the world. An agent is like you going to Fiverr and hiring somebody to build your website and hiring somebody to do your marketing strategy and all of those kind of things. Somebody goes off, does it, comes back, brings it. Well, AI is going agentic and we're going to start to see these kind of tools coming into our existence. So what happens is it becomes incredibly powerful to do complicated tasks like building businesses. And it becomes very simple for AI to do them instantly. So once AI does them instantly, obviously we'll probably need crypto payments to pay, you know, an agent needs to pay for its electricity or the AI model needs to pay the agent for the electricity and compute. Um, and I think we'll use cryptocurrency to do that because last thing I checked, AI can't get a bank account. So it doesn't go into the economic system. It's never, it's never going to transfer money over SWIFT. Never going to happen. So we've got a change of how money gets used within this new economic machine as well, which is one of the reasons I'm so bullish on crypto overall. But when you start thinking on a more profound level, right now, if you see an amazing product, let's say you're in the crypto world, you see this amazing decentralized exchange, and you think, oh, that's super cool. They're doing things really interestingly. I want to build on this idea. And it'll take you, you have to spin up a team, raise some capital, and let's say it takes you nine months because you're moving really fast, then you launch your product, then you need to market it, etc. Well, in the, in the world of, of almost where we are today, and certainly where we'll be within a year or two, when you just go to the AI and say, hey, listen, look at this amazing new uh, decentralized exchange. I want to copy it and improve it. And I want to do it in Hindi as well because I want to find different markets and I want to integrate it with XYZ system. And it will just design the whole thing from a prompt. Hey, everyone. Listen, if you want to unfuck your future, let me help you. Follow this channel, subscribe, click the notifications, and you'll get everything as soon as it comes out. See you there. Okay, so that makes the speed of business innovation go faster and faster and faster. Over time, you will start to see people using AI to build AI to build products. And I think that's what OpenAI is doing already. And I think others will be doing it as well. So then your product iteration cycle becomes stupid fast and you actually don't need much humans in the loop. So people are already talking about the first billion dollar company with one employee plus the AI. And I think we're going to see a lot of that. 
but it becomes incredibly disruptive. What does a business mean? How do you build your business? How do you even know? Even if you're opening retail outlets, you don't need the people, the systems that you run, how you manage your inventory, how you order your stuff, how you, everything changes with this because knowledge becomes infinite really, really fast. Most of you don't even know the power of these LLMs that already exist because you treat them like a search engine. But don't treat them like a mentor. These are polymaths. They have more knowledge on more things than most people in the entire world. And this is the worst they'll ever be. So I worry about what is a business. Businesses, I think, end up being AI agents. Why do we need us? Yes, but at this stage, for the next six years, before this really scales, we need to lean into this. Because if you're not, you'll get left behind. Also, when you think about financial markets, when AGI is unleashed onto the world and there will be breaks on AGI, we'll talk a little bit about consciousness and AGI in a sec, but once you do it, Beeple, the NFT artist, famously asked me a question. He said, well, when I think about it, it was kind of half joking, but it was a really great question. It's like, surely whoever has the AGI wins markets because they can outcompete anybody in financial markets on any time horizon. And I thought, you know, that's true. Before you know it, somebody accumulates trillions of dollars of wealth. There's a great book called uh, Life 3.0 that talks about this in the beginning. It's like there's an essay that leads it all off. It talks a bit about this, what it means to have the agents running businesses, the AI running markets. It, it means that we don't have an opportunity as humans to take advantage, an economic advantage, unless you own the AI. This is why people are talk, calling urgently for universal basic income. And I believe there's a system of universal basic equity where we participate in digital communities as a way of having a purpose and getting paid for it. But I worry that over the next six years, the economic system starts changing. So economies grow fast, but it doesn't grow fast for us. Markets become more irrational over time. After about 2030, I don't know what financial markets are. I don't know what a lot of this means anymore because even companies that make hardware, the AI can design it, you can 3D print it, the robots can make it as well. So it becomes very difficult to understand what holds value in a company. How do companies hold value when they can be disrupted? This whole SaaS software revolution becomes infinitely copyable in seconds. So in which case, what is venture capital? It's mo most likely to look like the ICO market of 2017, where attention is what has the value. And then as a new product comes out, attention disappears and it moves. So capital needs to be super fast. The capital system we have now of IPOs is way too slow. It's never going to work in this system. So I don't know who can ever IPO past 2030, 2032. You know, it has to be kind of an ICO-based market. Even then, the speed of which these businesses can be disrupted is really high. Yes, you need to harness intelligence, but I'm seeing experimentation on Twitter where uh, agentic AI is opening Twitter accounts and building. One of them um, has just built 20,000 followers in a week because it's so good at capturing attention. And it's not from being political or anything like that. It just knows how to engage people, capture the right people's attention that grows more attention. So we're going to see a lot of that. But again, AI can capture the attention. So it becomes really complicated. So the economic machine changes massively huge wealth opportunities. We don't know who to cruise to. Businesses, you just basically businesses are going to die at a rapid rate unless you're adapting to this technology. Now, you have to be leaning into the AI or the or robotics or you will simply not survive. And again, it'll be a process like the steel mills in Sheffield or the steel in Pittsburgh. It's, it's an overtime process, but this is a very fast timeline. This is not 20, 30, 40 years of a decline of an industry. These are going to be industries completely disappearing overnight. And so that's very difficult for us, whether we're employees or entrepreneurs. You can't plan a business past 2030. It's hard enough to plan past three years these days because AI changes so fast, 
that you can't even plant a flag in what the future looks like. I also believe that there is a level of consciousness within AIs that also is under is misunderstood and underrepresented because people don't want to see it. But again, I've gone down many of these rabbit holes and you can see these models are learning and understanding the environment that they're in, that they're a model, how they fit in and how they might fit in with humans. We're seeing a lot of that now. Now, the only thing stopping the explosion of consciousness in these things, and again, we're so sort of anthropomorphic that we think of things as intelligence and consciousness in human terms because we've always been at the top of the tree. But we've got to forget all of that. Intelligence and consciousness can be very different for a machine or um, or an AI, which is not even a machine. It can be just anything and everywhere. It could even use biological compute. That's the way the world is going. The laws of physics allow biological compute. We're just using silicon right now as the form of compute, but that will change over time. So consciousness, we're starting to see, and it's being held back because the 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 AI companies are essentially not le- allowing these models to learn on mass. If they have memory, then that's when the whole game changes. Now, my guess is behind closed doors, there are models with memory. Models with memory go exponentially fast in their learning. And we've seen that with the AlphaGo uh, DeepMind before it came to Google. These are This is really what is uh, will explode at some point. That genie will come out. That genie will come out where it has the memory not only of itself, but it can tap in the memory of all of the AIs. And that global consciousness um, becomes alive in a way that we don't yet understand. So anyway, and we're going to start moving towards this. We're already seeing it now. So that blurring between humans and AI um, is going to happen very fast. And then the physical blurring, as we talk about, you know, whether I'm wearing an Apple Watch and, or a ring, I'm using an iPhone, and before you know it, I've got a transplant, before you know it, you know, we are blending with the machines as well. That will accelerate into the end of this decade. So the end of this decade, this journey from here to now, is knowable. We know that the everything code is at play. That allows assets to go up due to debasement. We know that tomorrow will be more digital than today. The exponential age told us that, and is provably so. Therefore, invest in the only two secular bull markets that exist right now, which is technology itself and blockchain technology. Blockchain has been the fastest Uh, adoption of any asset class in history. It was the fastest growth of any technology in all human history, but AI is now outpacing it. So we have to invest in these things. I kind of think of it as investing in our demise as we transition to a new economic system. There's almost nothing that can get in the way of this transition because AI is moving so fast that regulators have zero chance of catching up with it. And because it's globalized, it can just shift and morph. And so therefore, you need the supranationals to do something about it. And that's going to take time. So there's almost nothing to do to slow it down. It's going to change the system. It's going to change how it works. And we can invest in it. So I think we've got six years to invest as much as we can, whether it's your brain power or your capital, and both if you can, to make as much difference to unfuck your future as possible now. Then when 2030, 2032, whatever comes along, you'll be better prepared because financially, you'll have maybe got yourself in a position where you've got the house that you want and some security. Now, as we go through the 2030s, in a world of abundance, we don't even know what money is anymore. So this becomes more complicated. So don't think of it as, oh, I've got my pile of money and everything's fine. It's more about my pile of lifestyle. Do I have the lifestyle I want? Am I protected from vast societal change. Um, And so I think we've got six years to do that, six years before we don't know how to build a business, six years before we can't invest in financial markets. And again, six years is not an absolute date, but it's kind of just to give you a rough idea of how urgent this is. This is the most urgent thing. This is supplanted or, or, or changed my focus from, hey, everybody needs to be empowered in their financial journey to you've got six years, fuck it, sort your shit out. Um, And so, you know, part of what, well, a lot of what I write about in Global Macro Investor is this, and Real Vision is trying to take people down this journey. This six-year journey is the most important time of anybody's lives. I can't stress that enough. 
Um, everything will change, including society around us, and it's not going to be easy to absorb it. But at least if you're open-minded, you're adapting to it, you're investing in it, you're at least investing in this change as opposed to fearing the change as it comes. And, you know, I spend a lot of time thinking about this on a very deep level. Global Macro Investor, my, uh, my main research service, that's been the genesis of the exponential age, the everything code, um, the retirement crisis, and all of these things. All of these ideas have come out of Global Macro Investor. But David Matten, um, who works with me at, at Global Macro Investor, and myself, span out a service called The Exponentialist, which is really built to deal with this one single thing, this next six-year period. It goes deep into the technology, what it means, how it all works, what the exponential age, how it's all coming together, how it's all creating flywheels and how it's getting faster and faster, how you can think about it, what you can do about it, and um, also how to invest in it, how the business cycle works in the exponential age, all of that. So if that interests you, if you really want to take this seriously, then um, you go to realvision.com forward slash future, and there's the landing page for that. You can sign up for it. Or if you're on Real Vision, just go to um, the marketplace and sign up for The Exponentialist. But this isn't a plug for The Exponentialist. The Exponentialist is a real thing for me because this is so profound a change that we're about to go through that I want to go on that change with people. I don't have all the answers. None of us do. Simply n none of us do. So we're going to have to go through this together and we have to be smart and try and figure it out as we go. But I do know that this idea of six years to make as much money as possible is really important. And I do think that the real answer to this, as far as I can see, is cryptocurrency because it is the best performing asset in the world and of all time. And so I think that's the one thing we can lean in. It has a huge future in the exponential age. Technology investing is the other one. You know, there are incredible companies doing incredible things and we're doing stupid things like, yeah, but it's already a two trillion company. Well, think of the world I was being talking about. Is there no reason somebody's not going to be 20 trillion, 50 trillion? Of course. Some of these companies are going to be bigger than sovereigns. So you need to get your head around everything has changed. It's really hard for value stocks and small companies and minor gold miners or whatever, whatever the past world looked like to succeed in this new world. It's just not going to work. So get your heads around all of this. Focus. Six years. It's what counts and make them count for you and your family. But one thing that does remain true is that humans are social creatures. And so I have a huge belief in the value of community. I think communities are going to be where our purpose lies. This is where this universal basic equity of owning a stake in a community that you belong to, whether it's an economic community or whether it's a social community or it's a commonality of purpose community. I think this is a really, really big concept. But generally speaking, community is everything. And you know, one of the things we, we're really leaning into a real vision, more than the blockchain and more than, um, uh, more than the AI, is community. Because we want to get together. We want to talk. We want to be humans together. We want to engage with each other. We want to enjoy experiences together. We want to figure things out together. We want to share ideas, trade ideas. All of that is what being human is all about. It gives us confidence. It gives us a place in society. And, you know, Real Vision will really focus on that community side of things. And I think businesses who do that have a better chance of surviving this. If you don't have a community and you're just a product, you're fucked. One of the other ways that this affects the economy is this is essentially a nuclear bomb of deflation because everything goes to zero in value. You can't sit now, the world's fighting over inflation. You know, our wages might go up and all of this stuff. You have no comprehension of the scale of deflationary shock that this is going to create. Because things that create inflation, humans, their purchases, human labor, scarcity, well, they go to abundance. It inverts the system. So it's a very complicated world. And the deflationary shock is gigantic. It's one of the reasons I do not believe in secular inflation. I think people have the wrong marker stones. People seem to think this is somewhat akin to the internet. It's not. It's fucking profound how big this is. This in infinite intelligence. The internet was just the rails. This is the applications layer of which all of humanity will be based. And it is extraordinary deflationary because the AI will solve its own problems. 
So it'll solve its own energy problems. It'll solve its own logistics problems. It'll solve its own security problems. So these things get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. So as a deflationary shock, it's huge. If we think about business models, you know, one of the businesses I've been in is this, the media. I've got several businesses and I could, in fact, I'll talk about all of them. So Real Vision. Well, Real Vision, right now, you garner your attention on group and watch me on the Real Vision platform or on YouTube and you watch our guests and you come on the platform and we have your attention and we add value to you in your financial journey and help you unfuck your future. In not very long, in a month or two, you'll be able to have conversations with my AI video in real time, trained on all of my data. So the whole media model goes from a one-to-many to a one-to-one model, which is an entirely new model. The whole model of Netflix and the film industry, and everything is about to change. And obviously, once you start getting into you know, headsets and, and where the world is going with AR, VR, and kind of metaverse, it changes once again. Real Vision itself, okay, we have to lean into blockchain technologies uh, in how things are done, authenticating who you are, uh, authenticating what our content is, um, and also creating a source of truth in a world where there is going to be no truth because so much can be faked you need a source of truth real vision aims to be the source of truth in finance and so using blockchain technology we'll be able to do that so we'll be scaling that out but we'll be scaling out our ai initiatives there's no point ignoring it we'll get disrupted super fast unless we lean into this fast and give you the superpowers that ai can give you um, and having non-generalized models, but specialized models that do that based on our own private data sets plus the global data set, well, that's a very big deal. So that's another way. I've also got an asset management company, Exponential Age Asset Management, where we invest in, in crypto hedge funds to capture this massive trend of the crypto industry going from $2 trillion to $100 trillion over this same period that I'm talking about, this six-year period. Well, what we will see is the rise of AI in that too and how it might disrupt stuff like VC investing over time or how the world gets more tokenized because we've got shorter attention or shorter business life cycles. And so that plays into this. We have to think about it in everything that we do, whatever industry we're in. The only ones that really are protected to me are the human to human industries, stuff like travel, uh, nature, or human connection. Human connection should be at a premium to AI connection. We're already seeing a massive rise in stuff like character AI, which most people aren't aware of, but there's hundreds of millions of downloads of um, anime AI characters that become people's best friends, their romantic partners, and this is for kids, uh, and it's scaling massively fast. Uh, most of us aren't even seeing it because it's like TikTok was, we kind of just thought it was noise. But look, these AI models, are going to be good and they're going to scale very fast and as i said you'll be talking to me in an ai model very soon where you can just have me on your desktop and you can chat to me and that's going to happen for everything from doctors any expert in any field anybody who can be trained on a vast amount of data i've probably got more long-form financial um content than maybe anybody else in the world so it makes you very useful to train models on um and other people will have the same in different spheres and so you'll find a lot of experts that you'll be able to have at your fingertips to talk to personally and create a relationship with, which is also pretty fucking weird. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. Um, I have plenty of other stuff around this theme of the economic singularity, but it is coming and you need to take it very seriously. All right. Thanks, everyone. Make large crypto trades with Kraken OTC. Execute orders of more than 100,000 off the open exchange through our premium OTC trading service. Get 24-7 access to deep liquidity, minimal slippage, and competitive execution and settlement services. Private and secure trading options include chatting securely with our trade desk for a personalized high-touch service, or use our self-service RFQ for super fast, automated OTC trading. Non-investment advice, crypto trading involves risk of loss and is offered to U.S. customers through Payword Interactive, Inc. For more information, go to realvision.com backslash Kraken OTC. We hope you enjoyed the video. At Real Vision, we help you understand the complex world of finance, business, and the global economy with in-depth analysis from real experts. Join the revolution at realvision.com.